Well, good morning. Welcome to Niantic Community Church, where no matter who you are and no matter where you are on your life's journey, you're welcome here. Welcome to NCC, where community is literally our middle name. Um, how are y'all today? Good? Beautiful weekend, right? How many of you made it to the Oyster Fest yesterday? A lot of out-of-town people go to that. It was interesting. I didn't go because of oysters. I don't eat seafood, <laughs> which I know is so ironic. Oh, anyway, um, I'm going to call Marion forward uh, to uh, give an announcement. In the meantime, just wanted to make a few notes that if you are new to our community, we extend to you a special welcome. Um, and the best way to keep in contact with us is through our Wednesday email slash note. Of course, we're on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram. We have communion in two weeks, not next week, in two weeks. And finally, we're going to, Marion, you can come on forward. Uh, finally, we're going to uh, celebrate Richard Shank's ministry with us today. So it's an exciting and somewhat bittersweet day. Come on, Marion. But it's good to be grateful. Amen. 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 All right, Marion. Uh, we are starting a new Bible study, Women of the Bible. Um, it's going to start October 6, which is a Wednesday. We're going to meet Wednesday morning in the church in, back there in the uh, fellowship room from 10 to 12. You can get your book online. Um, we have a few men and women signed up, and we'd like more because we want a whole perspective of these women of the Bible. So hope to see you there. You can call the church office and sign up. Thank you. Thank you. Any other announcements for the good of the whole today? Okay. Well, why don't we do some deep breathing? And when we're breathing deeply, we wanna breathe in and out through our noses. If you're breathing through your mouth, a lot of air is going out, but not a lot is going in. So if you want to, you can close your eyes so you don't quite feel so silly. Breathe in through your nose and out through your nose. And you might think of the word today, peace. Peace. Peace in and peace out. Peace in and peace out. And one more time, peace in and peace out. You can open your eyes. You can hear the children singing outside. It's a good sound, amen? Amen. We're gonna join them with our own song. So please rise in body and or in spirit, and we're gonna sing, sing praise to God who has shaped. You're gonna recognize the tune, if not the words.
Amen. Amen. You can be seated. <clears throat> Soul ever keep this in sight that God is our light. It's beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful. Soul ever keep this in sight. God is your light. Well, we're moving from that beautiful message into a message that is slightly more challenging. What would be a gospel passage from the book of Mark if it wasn't a little bit challenging? <laughs> but as ever, there is wisdom here. So I'm going to read from Mark chapter 9, verses 38 through 50. This is from a paraphrase of the Bible called The Message. John spoke up and he said, teacher, we saw a man using your name to expel demons and we stopped him because he wasn't in our group. Jesus was not pleased. And he said, don't stop him. No one can use my name to do something good and powerful and in the next breath slam me. If he's not an enemy, He's an ally. Why anyone by just giving you a cup of water in my name is on your side, on our side. Count on it that God will notice. On the other hand, if you give one of these simple childlike believers a hard time, bullying or taking advantage of their simple trust, you'll soon wish that you hadn't. You'd be better off dropped in the middle of the lake with a millstone around your neck. This is really where it gets real here, okay. <clears throat> if your hand or your foot gets in God's way, chop it off and throw it away. You're better off maimed or lame or alive and alive than the proud owner of two hands and two feet godless in a furnace of eternal fire. That's what you wanted on your Sunday morning. <laughs> And if your eye distracts you from God, pull it out and throw it away. You're better off one-eyed and alive than exercising your 2020 vision from inside the fire of hell. Everyone's going through a refining fire sooner or later. How many of us have been through a refining fire? It's the human condition. Everyone's going through a refining fire sooner or later but you'll be well preserved, protected from the eternal flames. So be preservatives yourself. Preserve the peace. So may God add understanding and wisdom to our hearing of these words. And let's pray for some wisdom coming from me, perhaps, and most importantly, from you and our discernment of the Holy Spirit. So if you would please close your eyes and we'll pray. Oh God, may the words of my mouth and may the meditations of all of us, may they give you strength and give us strength too. May you lead us day by day into new and abundant life and give us the wisdom to be salty. Amen. Well, Jesus got your attention, didn't he? It's kind of hard to sleep through that sermon. <laughs> it makes me think of the old Puritan churches, probably including our own, where the sermons in worship could be hours long. I just think that's what pastors did in those days. They read and they studied and they prepared and then they gave long, long sermons. <laughs> well, maybe they loved it, but sometimes their flock needed persuasion. So it was some poor usher's job. This is true. It was some poor usher's job to walk around the meeting house during the sermon with a pole in his hand, right? <laughs> And as I understand it in my little research, the blunt end of the stick was for the boys, the fur end was for the ladies. How chivalrous. 
Well, this scripture is not a gentle tap, tap, tap on the forehead. This scripture is a wallop. It's not someone gently nudging us awake. It's someone pouring cold water over our heads and yelling into our ears, wake up, not gentle. These texts can be really difficult to do anything with, especially because it it conflicts with our idea of the gentle and tender Jesus, right? As I said last week, though, sometimes Jesus is tender and sometimes he is fierce. And this is fierce. So when Jesus uses harsh language and violent language, should we take it literally? Should we take harsh and violent language literally? I don't think we should. And more to the point, I think we have an ethical, I know, (laughs) wipe the sweat off your brow, yeah. I don't think we have an ethical choice to take it literally, actually. I don't think we can. Now, some scriptures you can take literally and metaphorically, poetically, ironically, you can take them however you want. They lend themselves to multiple levels of meaning. Otherwise, why do we bother reading scripture week after week after week? But even here, this is true. The literal meaning doesn't make sense. Is Jesus actually telling us to like pull off our limbs? He can't be. He's making making a point and he's making it strongly. If he was teaching today, this would have a trigger warning in front of it, right? It would, it would have a trigger warning. But the point is, what is his point? Well, we know that it's not to harm yourself, right? Someone told this story in Bible study, about their time as a nurse and someone took this literally, this text, right? So this point is not to take it literally, right? I think on the contrary, the point is to stop doing harm, right? To stop doing harm. In its immediate context, the gospel writer Mark obviously had concerns for those in his community who were the newest on their faith journey. They were among the most vulnerable to be taken advantage of, probably because they were the most idealistic. Have you ever joined a community full of hope? Like, oh, finally, I made it (laughs) to this Eden. And then something happens. You learn about the dark underbelly of the organization or, right? Has that ever happened to you? You've just been disillusioned, right? Is that part of the, like, the fire that we were talking about earlier, right? Sometimes it just takes one congregational meeting for a new member to see a, a different and probably not pretty side of the church they've just joined. Can I hear an amen? Community sometimes has hard edges to it. And the people who have been here the longest have the most responsibility to do no harm. But of course it goes beyond that. Because in all this talk about feet being cut off and eyes pulled out, I could have lived without that image. This is like a Halloween. People like Halloween and people who don't. How many like Halloween? How many people are like, eh, I could leave it? Yeah. (laughs) This is really brutal imagery. But I think I can kind of understand what Jesus is getting at. I think what he's saying is that nothing, even our precious eyes and hands and feet, that nothing is worth more than following the breadcrumbs of love that God keeps placing in front of us. I'm gonna say that again. Nothing, even our precious eyes and hands and feet, nothing is worth more than following the breadcrumbs of love that God is placing in front of us. God lures us and tempts us to more abundant life. And Jesus is right. What's holding us back from dancing along that path? What's holding us back? Oh, it's just little things called fears and attachments and security and control 
and bank accounts and fill in the blank, you know, those little things, right? Those little things. But ironically, we believe those things are holding us together, right? Those are our sources of security, right? We think we need our hands and feet and health, but also our sense of security, control, reputation, or for things to go just the way we need them to go, or you fill in the blanks. You can do it better than I can for yourself. We are absolutely certain that we need these things to be happy. But Jesus says, nope, you don't. Some things are just in your way. So do what you can to live with less fear. I don't think that living without fear completely is possible. I don't know. I'm not Jesus. I'm just Stephanie. But I think that living with less fear is possible. How about that? Now, some of us are so used to our fear, and most of us actually are, because they show up as our thoughts, they're in our nervous system, they're deeply entrenched in our beings. Most of us are so used to our fear that it's normal for us. We're usually tense. We're usually worried. We try to future forecast things that may or may not happen. How many of you like to future forecast? Just run through the things that could happen in the future. How many of them are positive? Sometimes. How many of them are like worst case scenarios or versions thereof? Yeah. Well, I don't have a stick with me. Yeah, I know, <laughs> nor do I want one. All I do is issue invitations. So if you want, let this be your wake-up call. Let this be your wake-up call. You're not meant to be miserable. Did you know that? You're not meant to be miserable. I just don't think that's what God wants for us. That's a punishing, punitive God that just doesn't exist. God does not punish. I'm convinced of that now. God does not punish. I think God is just too busy scattering breadcrumbs of love. And we can turn away, and we do. But God's just going to keep on (laughs) putting them in front of us. God's waiting for our noses to catch the scent. Living with less fear. That is a call. That is a call. That's a calling worth a church that follows Jesus Christ. So what do you say? Amen? Amen. Amen. So Richard has um, composed an original piece here. I'm going to offer um, to those who are on Zoom that we have a PayPal link if you'd like to give. There's a basket in the back of the sanctuary if you're here. And of course, thank you for giving in all the ways that you do. So Richard wrote, praise God together. Praise God from whom all blessings emanate, flow and recreate. All creatures great and small, All who on earth do dwell, all our days, sing a song of praise. Praise God together, praise God from whom all blessings emanate, flow and recreate. All creatures great and small, all who on earth do dwell, all our days sing a song of praise, praise God together, praise God from whom all blessings emanate, flow and 
create all creatures great and small, all who on earth do dwell. All our days sing a song of praise, praise God together, praise God from whom all blessings emanate, flow and recreate all creatures great and small, all who on earth do dwell. All our days sing a song of praise, praise God together, praise God from whom all blessings song of praise, blessings and blessings fall. And so in a spirit of gratitude and praise, we lift our concerns of prayer to each other. So if you're in the chat, you can type in your prayers. And you're, if you're in the sanctuary, you can uh, speak them as loudly as you can. And uh, add your voice to the congregation. The people in Tennessee, Mary, thank you. Yes, go for it. Oh boy. So Kathleen's coworker fell and split his head open. So prayers for his recovery. Thank you. Yeah, Marion. Oh, I'm sorry. So prayers for Marion's um, son. Um, and the mother, you said the mother-in-law, the, the, his mother-in-law passed away unexpectedly. So prayers for peace and comfort. Thank you. Ned has a prayer uh, for Barbara, who's having eye surgery tomorrow. Thank you, Ned. Yeah, Jackie. Jackie, I'm so sorry for your friend, Jack, who's on hospice. He's 63 and uh, Prayers for him and for you and for all who love him in this tender time. Thank you. So um, we're gonna pray for Gail Saucier, uh, John's mom who has entered hospice. Thank you. Yeah, Rick. So prayers of thanksgiving for the 10th anniversary of the repeal of don't ask don't tell thank you yeah please terry awesome thanksgiving for kevin's fabulous healing from his surgery <laughs> i love that thank you prayers of joy from jeanette for her godson's wedding yesterday for will and vanessa all of their beautiful family Prayers for the Benvenuti family whose husband and father passed away unexpectedly this week. Thank you. Joanne is praying for migrants everywhere. Thank you, Joanne. Mary. Mary, thank you. So a prayer of gratitude from the heart for Richard and his imaginative music all these years. Thank you very much, Mary. Oh, 
So, <laughs> so Denise had a, had a flat tire and a stranger came by to help her with it. And when she asked his name, he said, Angel. So we pray for that angel. Thank you. Yeah. Jen, are you? Oh, is that the chat? Prayers for Richard's time with us. Thank you, Margaret. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, please. So prayers for two loved ones who are dealing with cancer. Thank you. I heard Harriet, but I didn't hear the other. Sandra. Sandra, your, okay, your sister-in-law. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Well, let's uh, continue our spirit of prayer by taking more deep breaths in and out through our noses. Nice deep breaths. We're praying today for some who are going through their times of refining fire. We're praying in joy for weddings, for ministries, for beautiful days, for oysters, and for gentle tap, tap, taps from God. So loving God, here we are. You've been here all along. And once in a while we show up. <laughs> once in a while we're here too, with you. Open to what you have to say to us. Open to the presence and the power. And open even to harsh words from many, many millennia ago that contain words of life and truth. So for all the things that are holding us back from abundant life, we ask for your assistance to move through them. And first God, we lift up those who are in seasons of grief, before or after a loved one's passing, before or after their own death. We think of their names and their stories and what they mean to us. And we pray for all those on that same journey. And we say, God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, every single one of us is in need of healing from something. That is a human condition. But we specifically lift up people who are going through, again, seasons of fire. And we say, God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And God, we can hear in the sanctuary the sound of children talking, of life happening, even in the midst of hard things. And so we celebrate all the reasons that we have to celebrate all of the small joys of every day and the big joys of momentous occasions. We sink into them and savor them. We promise not to focus so much on problems, but to savor joy with your help. And we say, God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And God, you know, the needs of the world are great, but the resilience of the world is great too. And so we celebrate the resilience of communities going through times of fire and hardship. We promise not to turn away from joy or from sorrow in our neighbors' lives. And we say, God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And last but not least, we lift up our own names for whatever we might need 
or desire today that is in line with your purpose for us and for the world. We say, Stephanie. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And we pray for your coming kingdom that is already here and that's also coming. We say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. I'm gonna invite the chancel choir to come forward. When we were talking about today, Richard stressed with me that this was to be a regular worship service. But we're doing a few little extra things to say thank you. So take it away, a chancel choir. So Richard, if you could come forward and Brooke and Fred. We're not gonna embarrass you too badly. <laughs> there we, we have to have balloons, I mean. <laughs> it has to happen. <laughs> So we just have a few people are going to say some words. You want to go first? Okay, sure. Uh, sure. Good morning. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Fred Fulmer, um, and I'm a member of the Music and Worship Arts Committee. Um, I haven't been a member of the church for a very long time, but Richard's gifts were quickly apparent to this newcomer. And so on Richard's last Sunday as music minister, I'd just like to take a moment to acknowledge these gifts so that we might all appreciate them together. After all, they are Richard's gifts, but because he has shared them so freely in an important way, they have become our gifts too. I'd start with Richard's virtuoso talents as an organist and instrumentalist. 
whether it was playing the church's beautiful pipe organ or the piano or switching seamlessly to guitar, banjo, mandolin, cello, or basically anything. Um, it has always seemed like Richard just knows what instrument could help to deliver the message of a particular worship service. To have the church's worship so perfectly accentuated, so consistently, has been a rare gift indeed. Similarly, as we just heard, Richard has generously given his talents as a composer and arranger. He's provided original writings that have offered musical solace, joy, and reflection. He's also a wonderfully gifted collaborator, working with many musicians in many configurations. I am very lucky to have been among these musicians, and I can say that Richard is unusually deft and generous when practicing and playing with other musicians. Mm -hmm. In his leadership role as music minister, Richard has directed a program in, we have, in which we have all delighted in a great variety of musical styles, genres, and moods. The ministry aspect of this, I think, should not be overlooked. Through his music and the diversity of this music, Richard has provided many opportunities to expand our notion of how God might be speaking to us and to the richness of possibilities to which God might be calling us. And so through his gifts, generosity, and it really must be said, musical genius, Richard has faithfully ministered to us, both as a leader and as a fellow traveler. Music and Worship Arts Committee members wished to convey above all how much we have appreciated his contributions and how much we will miss him. Finally, in thinking about Richard's ministry here, I can't help but think of a quote that's attributed to another highly gifted musician from a different time and place who also saw music as a devotional ministry, one Johann Sebastian Bach. <laughs> I play the notes as they are written, Bach said, but it is God who makes the music. Richard, we offer our humble and abundant gratitude for helping us to hear and experience God's music. And we send you off with our very, very, very best wishes. Let the people say amen. Thank you. That is a tough thing to follow. <laughs> so um, if it is okay with everybody, I'm going to give and take back a present. Um, I want to give credit to Marilyn on the screen. I saw her up there before. Um, she said when she left the choir, the choir wrote notes in a journal for her. So we have collected a journal and we have notes from people here, from people in YouTube land. And um, so this is the journal that we've put together for you. I want to volunteer to hold on to it after the service so that if people have not had a chance to write a thought to you. Um, and I would also like to welcome people to send the thoughts to Richard directly so he can put them in his journal or send it to one of us and we can get it to Richard just because I know how much it's meant to me to have you here for the past, I don't know how many years, but um, when you would sub for Paul and I was in the choir, it just meant a lot that here I am, just random person in the choir. And every time you would come in church, you'd be like, hi, Brooke. And I was like, oh, he knows my name. Cool. <laughs> and um, so I've known Richard more now through music and worship arts rather than being in the choir due to two nine-year-olds out there. Um, but I just want to say what it's all meant to us and how moving everything has been and and you don't get out of this so come on down and <laughs> so you could go stand by richard um i know how hard it's been this past year to balance or this past pandemic, how hard it's been to balance everything. 
and seeing the increased role Richard has taken on and being pulled in so many different directions, I can't even imagine. I don't, the subject I teach, I don't have to be there in person. You have to. So I want to thank you, Anne, for helping Richard, supporting Richard through all he has done for us, because I'm sure the increased evening time, the increased hours throughout the day, you have helped him help us be everything that we wanted to be. So thank you. and. We have. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Thank you. <laughs> Richard, is there anything you would like to say? Yeah, I have a few. Okay. You got more? We've got some love gifts. Fred. Wow. Thank you, Fred. Sure. Um, I just, yeah, I do have a line I told Stephanie, but I'd love, love to say it, which is, I have not run out of musical ideas, uh, love of making music for worship, the love of this congregation, loving the music staff, and the church staff, and Stephanie, and all of you. I've just run out of energy to do two jobs, <laughs> but I haven't run out of that other stuff, so it's really been great, and I'm not leaving for good, I'll be around. Um, that's all I have to say. <laughs> so, well, just we have a card from the committee, and then the there was, a, as you know, there was a special offering taken in your honor. So, there is oh, like maybe there well there was. Um, <laughs> um, so, there's some gift cards there for you. Um, should I say that? Okay, so, um, there's there there's a Visa card as well as a card for Smith Sakers. So you can go to the nursery and yeah, like, we figured. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So I just like to, um, as we wrap up here, I'd like to um, collect words about Richard's uh, gifts for him. So just if you're on the chat, you can type them in. What words do you think of when you think of Richard's ministry with us? Creative. Joyful and creative from the chat. Yeah. Generous. Generous. Thank you. Wholehearted. Wholehearted. Joy yes, the joy of music. God centered. God centered. Thank you. So we're going to gifted, gentle, generous from Mary Child. I thought that we could do, um, we can't really do a blob of blessing, but we can do a blessing for Richard, okay? So if you would, you can raise your hand towards Richard and Anne. And you're gonna repeat after me, may God bless you and keep you. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you. May God's face shine upon you. And be gracious to you. And be gracious to you. May God look upon you with kindness. May God look upon you with kindness. And give you peace. And give you peace. For each and every day. For each and every day. Of your precious lives. Of your precious lives. Amen. 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 Before you go, we're just going to pass the peace. Well, you can clap if you want to. <laughs> So Richard and Anne, the peace of Christ to be with you, also with you. Peace of Christ to be with you and with you. You can do it to the, to the back, to the front, to the sides. Peace of Christ. Thank you.